Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls, another one of my beginner series. Let's take it right back to the very basics. Uh, you've got your first ball python, you've got an enclosure, and we've got an enclosure which is not entirely suitable for a baby ball python. I'm going to show you what I would do to make that work. We're going to have a little bit of fun, a little bit of an experiment with one of my hatchlings and stick it in to a uh, terrarium with some climbing opportunities. This is also education for me. I want to see how the hatchling responds, whether we can get it settled, whether we can keep it eating, and whether the snake is actually going to want to climb. So let's get after it. All right, guys, let's have a little bit of fun here. I'm gonna show you how to take a slightly unsuitable caging or accommodation for a ball python and turn it into something that works. Let's assume you've been to the pet shop, you've bought your hatchling and your pet shop has advised you to get one of these Exoterra terraniums. They are actually very, very good, um, but you just need to know some of the limitations. They've told you that your snake likes to climb, so they've given you a, this is a mini tall, and you've been away and you've decorated the tank with plenty of climbing opportunities because that's what you've been told that snakes like. You've also been told that ball pythons like to hide in a hide. So let's take a look at the terrarium. The top comes off quite easily and is wire mesh. And this is fine in the tropics. It gives nice ventilation inside your terrarium. But if you are living in drier climates, you may actually need to blank off the top of the terrarium to keep the humidity in. For our purposes here in the tropics, this is fine. We're going to leave it just as it is. We want the ventilation. So this is good. It's fastened securely so your snake can't get out, even if it does climb. And the Exoterra terrariums come with a... They come with a latch and opening doors like so to make it nice and easy for you to get in. So let me show you what I've done initially so that you can see how we set this up. Let me just zoom in for you. Let me bring the camera up closer so that you can see over the, the lip. Okay, so here we go. We've got some cypress mulch substrate. I've chosen cypress mulch because it is easy to spray down. You can wet it to keep humidity in if humidity is an issue. I've got a nice hide in the back here. Nice little hide for your hatchling. This guy here in the back. We have a water bowl in the front and we have some climbing opportunities and I've put some nice fake plants in here so you would think that that's pretty awesome right good to go you can also buy an exoterra lighting unit that fits really snugly on top of the terrarium and it's got an LED light inside it here we are, let me just plug it in for you so that you can see what you can do. Okay, so there we've got a light in the terrarium, which is awesome. Doesn't that look fantastic? Now, does your snake need lights in its terrarium? Uh, probably not. Um, ball pythons are not really too fussed. You can give them a day and night cycle. Uh, but this light is primarily for your viewing rather than the snake it does not need it day and night cycles are provided by natural daylight there's enough natural daylight in most locations in your house to give your snake a day and night cycle so it doesn't necessarily need the light but there's no harm in putting a light in just be aware that if you do put a light in here it does warm up the enclosure and also draws humidity out of the enclosure so watch for that as a potential issue uh, you may not want to keep the lights on too long for the snake. Uh, just use it for a couple of hours when you're viewing the snake if it's active at night. But you don't need to keep it on all the time. UVB 
Uh, you've probably heard about UVB. Does your snake need UVB? And here I'm going to say definitively, no, it does not. There are plenty of collections of snakes in the world that have never seen UVB and they are perfectly healthy. There are animals that do require UVB that get sick if they don't get it. If you try keeping a bearded dragon without UVB for it to bask and produce vitamin D, which is actually the metabolic requirement, UVB is not required, it's vitamin D that's required. But your bearded dragon needs the UVB in order to manufacture its own vitamin D because it's diet deficient. Your snake does not. It gets all the vitamins it needs from the rats that it eats. Uh, the liver of the rat is a rich supply of all vitamins. So your snake does not need UVB. UVB is actually quite harmful. If you're exposed to UVB, it can cause blindness. If you don't wear sunglasses, it can cause sunburn and it can cause skin cancer. So I would avoid UVB for your snake. It does not need it. Use one of these ordinary LED daylight lights if you want to put light in there, but light is not so important. Now you'll notice that the terradium has glass sides. The back is blanked off with a fake rock background which is fantastic. Uh, that provides a nice background but I'm going to suggest that you modify this terrarium for your ball python. If your ball python can see out and you can see in, it's not going to feel secure. So what we're going to do is to blank off with paper both sides of the terrarium. We're not going to inhibit the front view, that's where you're going to clean and view your snake, so it won't stop you from viewing your snake, but it will help to make your snake feel a little more secure. So let's go ahead and modify this terrarium with some paper just to blank off the sides so the snake can't see out and you can't see in. If there's a lot of traffic in the room that you keep your snake in, it will not like the disturbance of people coming and going. So this is a useful modification. So we're just going to take the paper and tape it up over the sides. It doesn't need to go all the way to the top, but we're going to cover the sides. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so we've blanked off each side with paper and it's stuck on there and this would be the biggest single tip or piece of advice that I could give you for making your terrarium work is to blank off the sides so the snake cannot see out and it's not disturbed by people walking past the terrarium all the time. It will not disturb your viewing pleasure. It will not interfere with your watching the snake and getting an awesome view through the front of the terrarium glass, but it will make your snake feel much, much more secure. So let's just plug the light in again and turn the light off so that you can see the difference. And now you can see that the snake cannot see out of the sides. So let me just zoom in again and show you the inside of the terrarium because I'm going to make some additional modifications. I'm not entirely happy with the setup. Okay, so you can see I've got the basics. I've got a water bowl and I've got a hide in there. Uh, you can see those two elements, but I'm not 
entirely happy yet with the setup. I don't think that the snake is going to have enough clutter or spaces to hide in the bottom of the tub for it to be comfortable. So I'm going to make a few modifications. I'm going to add an additional hide. So let me take this out. Let me take this one out. And I'm going to put this one in at the back here, if I can squeeze it in. Let's just see if we can get this in. Okay, so we've got a hide now in here that takes up a little bit more space. And what that does is also give another hiding space. You see down here, in the back corner down there is another space for your snake to hide and what I'm going to do to help that is to move this vegetation see the corner down here where the snake might want to hide what I'm going to do is to take this vegetation and move it lower down in the tub in the terrarium move it lower down so that that is now hidden from view. So if your snake wants to hide in there, it can. I'm also going to do the same on this side with this one. Okay, so I'm going to take this vegetation here and I'm actually going to stick it on a little bit lower down so that it actually touches the ground and provides the snake with a little bit of additional security. I'm going to put this hide back in the front facing the other way with that vegetation over. So your, your snake now has two options. It can hide in here, it can hide in here and you can't see it. So your snake is going to feel very very secure and the water bowl is going to go back down into this corner here behind this vegetation. Now, this is a bit of an experiment for me as well. I actually want to see if, your sn if the baby snake will use the climbing opportunities and actually climb. I want to see, I'm curious myself, to see if a baby ball python will actually use these climbing opportunities and climb up the sides of the cage. So, so I'm going to leave these climbing opportunities for the snake to use. And you can just put in a little bit more vegetation if you think you want it to look I'll tell you what we'll do we're going to put in a bit of vegetation here on this side just to make it look a little bit more naturalistic but you'll see now that there's plenty of clutter in here plenty of spaces for the snake to actually hide in and I'm much happier with that setup now than the open space that we had before. So let me just zoom back out again. Here we go, here's our terrarium. And everything in here is actually washable. We can spray all of this stuff down. We can make the bedding nice and humid if we need to. If your humidity is not good, we can spray all of this down. And we can add some water to the water bowl. There we go, a nice full tub of water. That sits just down here, behind here, sits in place. The snake can't tip that over. So this terrarium is now ready to receive our baby ball python. I'm happy with this. We've covered up the two sides so the snake can't see out and we can't see in. So the snake is going to feel secure. It doesn't interfere with our view of the snake from the front of the terrarium here. We have a lamp if we need it, although we don't actually need to use it. And if you do not want to use a light, don't bother. Just take the light away or don't bother buying one and you can have the terrarium just like this. And you can see that down in the bottom of the terrarium here is already quite dark. 
that's just what your baby ball python is going to need it's going to feel nice and secure in there so i am going to take this and i'm going to put it on a shelf here and what i'm going to do with this we're going to have a little bit of fun i'm actually going to use it for one of my hatchlings and i want to see if i can get the hatchling established and eating using a terranium like this which is actually less than ideal the surface area the area that the snake has to work with even if it doesn't climb is actually sufficient for you to be able to keep a baby ball python for about six months in this terranium before you need to upgrade to a bigger one so we're going to run through that once your snake has got to a certain size in the next episode of this beginner series we will actually use a slightly more suitable terranium but let's experiment first with our baby hatchling see whether we can get it established and eating and growing nicely in this and we can keep it in this for six months until we need to upgrade to a larger tub so let's do that let's, let's take a hatchling and to be fair when you buy your hatchling it should already be established and eating from the shop that you bought it from so i'm not going to put a new hatchling in here and try and get it to start eating in this terrarium what i'm going to do is to take a hatchling that's already had several meals it's already established so it's a fair comparison that's how you would get your baby ball python from a pet shop or a breeder and we're going to introduce it to this terranium and see how it does so let me just zoom in again for you so that you can see what we've done and you can see how dark it is down there inside the terranium that's where our snake is going to live so this is where the baby ball python is going to be up on the shelf there next to some of my other tubs and we're going to introduce a hatchling into that in the next few days after i select one that is already stable and eating and we'll follow it for a few days just to see if we can make that terranium work for us so here we go guys, I've chosen a little male from the OD Calico Clutch that you saw in an earlier video. This guy has had three meals, so the challenge now will be to get him established in this new vivarium and try to keep him eating. So as I said, uh, this is an established male, this is roughly what you would get from your pet shop if, if you were going to buy a new snake. Uh, it's had three meals let's just take a look at him so you can see he has already put on a little bit of size so let's get him into the terranium and see how he does so here we go guys we're gonna put the snake into the terranium here now put him in there there he goes do up the enclosure so there he is inside the terranium he hasn't budged yet we'll just leave him be and see where he ends up and I'll keep you guys posted on how this little guy does in this little terranium So there you have it guys, some of my recommended modifications for that particular terranium. Uh, in a follow up episode we'll look at something a little more suitable with a slightly better setup for the hatchling. As it grows we'll upgrade it to something else. But we'll continue that experiment of seeing how a baby ball python reacts in a terranium when it's given opportunities to climb. You've already seen some slightly disturbing behavior from this hatchling and i've noticed it in all ball pythons uh, they do climb but as they climb when they hit the roof of the tub or the roof of the terranium they tend to track 
along the roof of the terranium and end up upside down which looks mighty weird and uh, you saw a photograph of that uh, sort of behavior uh, at the end of this video uh, I'll be watching for that in the future and perhaps rectifying that by not allowing them to climb right up to the roof so that they don't curve over um, as I said that's not normal behavior for a snake that likes to climb uh, green tree pythons for instance always orient the right way up and for some reason ball pythons don't and I've noticed in particular with a lot of my collection that the snakes actually prefer to have something underneath them that they can orient to and if they are climbing yes they will orient onto a branch and manage to stay upright when they're on the ground uh, obviously it's not so much of a problem and I've noticed that the spider ball pythons also when kept in contact with the ground don't tend to have as much of a corkscrew issue as they do if you pick them up for instance so it does appear that um, ball pythons do like to feel the ground underneath them but I'll keep you posted on that we'll keep an open mind we'll move this thing on as it grows and I'll keep you updated on its progress and show you some video from time to time on how this hatchling is going in its new enclosure um, it does seem to be more active than its siblings that are kept in tubs um, the rest of the clutch that are in tubs all curl up and go to sleep underneath the newspaper and this thing seems to be climbing all over so in that respect it is a little bit unusual and I'm not sure that that's actually natural behavior um, I'll keep a close eye on it make sure that the snake doesn't get too stressed it is actually asleep now this is the morning so the snake is asleep so there you go those are my recommended modifications for a terranium that isn't quite suitable for the snake uh, we will make it work and we will upgrade to something more suitable in the future so thanks for watching don't forget to share like and subscribe and we'll see you next time